Here we go. Hello, good talk, everyone, and welcome. I have here a, a new camera. So you can see it's a different angle, different whatever. <laughs> Doesn't make me more handsome than I was before, but uh, hey, you know, I got can try. All right. So today, Parshas Vaera. Gewald. That was it was today. Let's start with the the Maisif in the Baal Sheva Kodesh. Again, this is a pretty well known story, and I think it's a once the Talmide Baal Shem, they asked him to show them a Dvar Pel. Show me a miracle. So he said, okay, as long as you don't burst out laughing. So once in Lashabas Kodesh, they were in Shul, Lashentov showed him a very poor person that was davening with this amazing slavas and everything. And after the tefillah, this poor person says, good Shabbos to everybody, you know, good Shabbos, good Shabbos, good Shabbos, going from one to another. When he went home, and he was, you know, you can see what it was like. He was like, he was high. He was like, whoa, he was so happy. So the Baal Shem Tov, when he went out, when he went home, Baal Shem Tov and his students went after him, slowing. When he got home, they they hid like behind the door. It was a little bit open. And they saw there's a table and smoke candles that were uh you know lit on it. And there was a woman wearing this whatever rags that when he came home, says, Good Shabbos, my wife. She says, Good Shabbos, my precious husband. I'll say Shalom Aleichem, you know, Simcha and Chavah Sadas. He says, my wife, give me the wine. Let's make Kiddush. So the wife, his wife told him, put him two loaves on the table. And she said, the, the apple of my eye. Tonight you make Kiddush on bread. He says, yes, yes, my wife. Let's make Kiddush on bread. And it will be ah, it will be so tasty, like shiayna meshumer, you know, that is waiting for the tzaddik and also love it. Person made kiddush on the bread, and he said, "Now let me have the fish." You know, tam ganeden, not the same. So the wife brought a dish full with with um, barley, you know, barley or uh, lentils. I'm sorry gave him a little in the plate and took a little bite by themselves and says, eat and enjoy my precious husband, Bezat Hashem, Alavai, that these barley will be tasteful for you like, like the best fish. So he ate, he ate the, the, the... and he was like, well, tremendously happy and joyous and slowly and his face were like shining. He says, Bo Hashem, we lack absolutely nothing. It's unbelievable. You know, it says, Tam Shabbos is Menor Labo, Tiyom Shekulo Itov, he sings mirrors. And he says, Now, my Eshes Chayel, please give me the delicious soup that you made. So, again, she took, you know, it's very similar to the story of Bacham Gatam. She gave another another spoon of the lentils, and she said, "He is," and he ate it. And he says, "Ah, it's delicious soup. It's, it's so sweet. It's unbelievable. It's like, 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 like uh, uh to geese, you know." Says, "Ay, ay, ay, you know, such delicacies. This is totally unbelievable." Yom Shabbos Yom Achmadim. 
Then she gave him another spoon of lentils, so the fish, and another another spoon of lentils for comfort. And he was singing Tzushachal Mishaloi, and then he says, now my dear wife, let's dance for Shabbos. And he got up, and he started dancing. And he was dancing with his wife, well, the Talmudim saw, and they started laughing. The Bajanto says, I warned you not to laugh. You promised that you will not laugh. But you did not keep your promise. So your chilek is therefore being taken away from you that you won't see the rest that I wanted to show you after um, after this, you know, I wanted to give you a present after you saw the simcha of this, of this, this, this poor person. He says, what's the matana? He says, the matana I wanted to give you is that you will get to the madrega of this poor person and to be happy just for the Shabbos itself not for the things that make the Shabbos. However, you did not live up to your part, and therefore, unfortunately, um, you're not going to get it. Interesting, interesting, Mahalach. Uh, you know, we know that the, the, uh, the, um, the length to which the Baal Shem HaKodesh went, you know, to extol the virtue of simple Jews. It is also known, you know, that, that before the Baal Shem HaKodesh, the situation was that, that uh, um, Israel was almost split into two. On one hand, you had these amazing Tamidah Chachamim that went into learning Torah to such a degree that was divorced from the 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 Emes the Kapart, the, the Kedusha the Kapart of, of Yiddishkeit. It was Torah it was dry, and they started arguing. I mean, they were arguing on what they call pilpulim, you know, on the most minute details that many, many times had no... It became almost like a Torah competition. Obviously, there were G'day Le'olam, you know, and the G'rod, and the Chesem Sefer, and the Hashem. But the genre all all, all its own was was one in which the uh, the the intellectual pursuit of learning Torah was going one direction, and the rest of the Jewish world was becoming simpler, becoming further and further from the brethren. You know, the Tamedech Chachamim, those who were learning the Torah learners, looked down upon the other people as if they were hardly Jewish. And the simple people, uh, and you're talking about simplicity, that you're talking about people that were hardly keeping Yiddish right. They didn't know. They didn't know any better. Um, so the Baal Shema, it was it, it got to the point that basically the Jewish nation was in, in, in a danger of actually splitting into two. On top of which, you had the scholar, you know, driving a wedge, and the scholar was getting in, making inroads, dafka, in the in the Olamei Shivas, where you know the 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 the, the, the learned people were. 
Vashem Tov came into the world to, to, to basically, you know, zip up the two parts into one and elevate the mila of each um, to understand and to have a cognition of the greatness of Tmimis and Pshitis. Halimasa, that was the Iker of Yiddishkeit. You know, on the other hand, uh, he fused it together with the Lima the Torah. That Lima the Torah was now fused with Tmimis, was fused with Kedusha, was fused with 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 the void of Hashem together, and the 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 introduction of the two together uh basically created, as we all know, new movement uh um in 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 Yiddishkeit that was basically practically the only movement that was able to withstand the the um onslaught of the Ascala and and uh, because whatever it is that the Hasidus got to um the masculine practically was weren't able to 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 get in but there's one thing that you know you know, people like to to like get on the on the bandwagon of like, whoa, you know, you have the the high society of the Torah learners and looking down on the downtrodden and you know the simple people. And he comes about Shem Tov saying something like so humane and so whatever it is and how important you know the simple people were and so forth and so on. But it's a lot more than that, much more than that. As we know from Maise Mechoch of the Tam, Tmimis is not like, listen, since you don't have the capacity to learn Torah 24 hours a day and, you know, understand and everything and be mechalic and splitting hairs. So, you know, you might as well, being simple is a very, very good second, you know, second best. It's a very, you know, it's a very nice silver medal. You know, like a, as one comedian said, you know, silver medal is, is he doesn't understand what is the, the big shtick about silver medal. He just says that you are the number one loser. You know, you're the one who didn't make it to number one. You're the first one the top person that didn't make it to one one. The, the point is that this is not the case. The Baal Shem Tov revealed that avoid Hashem and limit the Torah has to be done with Mimas and Pshitas. That it's not just the 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 um proficiency and understanding and learning what the Torah is about. But it's it's how simply you learn. The idea is when you learn Torah, and this is what the Baal Shem HaKadosh revealed, what Rabbeinu revealed further, Lima the Torah is not about what you have to say about the Torah. Living the Torah is about what the Torah has to tell you. That's what living the Torah is about. When you take a look at it, you know, like, duh, obviously this is what it's about. But it's not that obvious. Because when you learn Torah, it's almost, especially if you're good at it, and the, the enjoyment of Limit Torah is part of Limit Torah. It's part of the mitzvah of Limit Torah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, something that must be done. If you don't enjoy the Limit Torah, I mean, I'll be that you're learning. 
But the Havasatar can only come with enjoyment of Lima Dutera. But nevertheless, the idea is not to find the kashas. The idea is to understand what the Torah is telling you. Hashem, the Sikhas around that we will learn tonight has a lot to do with that. But where I actually want to take this is to the Kuda that how do you daven or how do you learn when you can't daven and learn? I don't want to just dafka take davening because we understand that in the Torah we have what what Rabbeinu says, you know, in Sicha Ein Vov, Ein Zayin Ein Ches, the very famous Sichas that the Rav Leim Shlom Shik, Zichron Levrocho, you know, built his system on it. Rabbeinu says that the way that 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 you need to learn Torah, Rabbeinu says, is just pay attention to what you're saying. Say the words, you know, concentrate what you're saying. And Rabbeinu says, Mimele you, and you will understand, you know, automatically. It will be self-explanatory. And Rabbeinu says, okay, and, and that which you don't, that which you don't understand right away. When Reb Nosson was learning, we told Reb Nosson to learn Kabbalah. He instructed him how do you, how you're supposed to learn. So he told him, you, you take a pencil and you learn. And every place where you don't understand, you make a dot. And you go over the entire thing. Uh, if it's Eschaim, you go the, over the entire Eschaim. And, and your Eschaim will be filled with that and all those places that you didn't understand. The next time when you go over it, you go over, you'll visit a certain point where you put the dot before, and now you'll get it. So erase the dot on that place. And when you get to that, the next dot or whatever it is, you still don't understand, leave the dot there. And he says, and that's the way you'll go around again and again and again until at the end, all the dots will be erased and you will have the whole thing down path. Babeinu was 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 very very strong into Bekis, you know, learning a lot. Uh, Rabbeinu says that the 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 main reason why people fall from limited term is because they want to understand absolutely everything immediately. And he says he says just you don't understand, fine, go right. The next time you'll visit it, you understand more. When Rav was 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 a child, one of the things that that I mean, Rav he was the prodigy of 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 basically the entire Ukraine, especially that area in you know, the where he came from. At age nineteen, uh, was eighteen or nineteen, he was already in part of the basin of Rabbi Yitzchok, Rabbi Rabbi Yitzchok Bedichev, would not sign. It would not be matter a guno without Reb Nosson signing it, eighteen or nineteen. So you understand what kind of a, 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 a an ilui Reb Nosson was. When Reb Nosson was a child, he was learning in yeshiva. He was known as an ilui. Uh, the other talmidim will, you know, were saying kashas. What does this mean? What does that mean? And how do you go this? And how do you understand that? And Reb Nosson would say, um, Reb Nosson would say nothing. Reb Nosson asking, you know, how come you're not asking? He says, because there's no kasha there. And his Rebbe said that, that Reb Nosson's nit, nit kasha was more precious to him than the kashas of the others. Because the, the, the reason that, that, that people... If you ask a kasha because you don't understand it, that's the way you're supposed to do it. It's legitimate. But if you ask a kasha because 
really the living the Torah is like it's not that interesting. So how do I make it more interesting? Let me find out what what kasha can I ask? Let me sort of like get my intellect involved. Then then I'll as you will see later on, Masih Hasaran of this week, is, is everything is Nagiat to that. When a person is Mekadash himself, the Torah becomes sweeter in his mouth. Doesn't matter what depth of Torah he learns. It used to be in the previous generation, you'd see two Bresla the Hasidim sitting in the Bismedrish in Mesharan, and one of them, they were very simple Jews, one of them was reading the Kuta Alochas, just reading it, without explaining whatever, just, you know, because you start explaining the Kuta Alochas, you're never, you're never going to finish. It's it's like an ocean deep. Just reading on top and the other, the other Chosa was sitting there just crying, just with his tears flowing down his face. It's 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 an, a very very important nakuda about the kutel office. You read it. What do you can understand? You can understand what you don't understand. Just go by it. The kutel office is not understood the way others for him are understood. It influences you from in front and from the back and surrounding you. There's no words even to explain. The Ashpa of the Limud of the Kuta Alochas on a person on any level that he can. And it's not, and it, it, it is very, very frequent thing that people may have problem in learning Kuta Alochas because you're trying to grasp it the way that you're trying to grasp different kind of Limudim, and it just doesn't yield. He moves from one in into the other, and this means this, means this, means this. This is Prinas this, Prinas this, Prinas this. And he says, like, I don't even know what he wants from me. But if you take it from there and you just go with it, you will find that you are getting out of the Kuta Aloha as a whole different kind of, of, of Ruchnis de Kamadrega that you can't even put it into words. But the main equivalent I actually wanted to to get into with this, myself of the Baal Shema Kodesh, if to excuse me for like rubbing my eyes, I said, I have a an eye infection and it's this point in time it's itching, so I apologize. Davini. We all know how you know how you daven when when things go well, you know, when when you feel it, you really feel it, it goes, it's your mamish talking to a Kodesh Baruch Hu and, and, and it's a gewalt. What about other times? Other times, it just doesn't go. I'm pushing, but it, it just just doesn't go. So it's very very easy to fall off, you know, to slouch, you know, to slouch off the the basic, basically the whole thing. It's just just let it go. Just finish the daven. Just get over. Tmimus and pshitus in davening means. You look at the words and understand what it means. What they mean. And that's it. You read and so on and so on and whatever and, and you're saying it to Hillel. What is the pshat of the verse? Just on this way, there's no fervor, there's no... Uh, this you leave when Shemaim they give you, they open up, you know, a, 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 a dvekas for you, you'll feel a dvekas. But this is not what tefillah is. Tefillah is, Pashut mean what the words are. That's it. 
על פי פשט, what is it? קדוש ברוך הוא, אומר, רבי אלישע לא משיק דווקא טוב בי. Years ago, he said, קדוש ברוך הוא is in the סדר. Just read the words in the סדר. What are the words saying? That's the film. Mitzichah Barlev has, has been telling this to me, been drilling it to me like decades. Tefillah is just saying what the words are. And you start in the beginning, and you finish after Alein. No shortcuts, unless obviously you have to, which is, you know, La Locha, this is, you know, uh, it's... That kind of, this is the Tmimus, this is the Pshitas, this is the, the, because inside the words of the Tefillah, inside the words of the Torah, uh, the very fact alone that you are holding a sitter in your hand and you have talus, you have talus around you, you have Tefillah and you have in your arm, um, is so much greater than any kind of emotional gratification you can ever get from a tefillah that is, is kulo, I don't know what, kulo lights, kulo, you know, high. Poshut, what does the Torah say? What does the tefillah say? This is Yiddishkeit. Like Rabbeinu says in Torah Yud Beis, Likutei Maran Tinyana, Rabbeinu says, Rak Yikar Yadus, the the mainstay, the crux of Yiddishkeit, is just to go and do what you need to do. But Mimes Vepshitus, and if what whatever it is that you want to do is compliant with the cover of the Kodesh Baruch Hu. Do it. And if not, no. I had a guy come, Baruch Hashem, he came to my door to collect some money. And while well, we were talking, so he told me, he says, like, he says, you know, I was thinking that this Indian of, of what is the cover of the Kodesh Baruch that Ben is talking about here. So he says, I thought the cover of the Kodesh Baruch is, is the Neshama. What do you think? I said, I told him, I think the Kodesh Baruch is that if whatever it is that you have in mind to do befits Kodesh Baruch Hu's covenant, do it. If not, not, that's it. And I remember I spoke to Absolich about it. And I told him, the guy to ask me whatever it is, and this is what I answered him. So he says, but what did he ask you? <laughs> so I told him, believe me, you don't want to know. If I were to tell you what he asked you, I said, Ush, leave me alone. But these are not the kind of kashas that, that we need to ask. Well, Kovat Hashem. Look for Kovat Hashem. Kovat Hashem is, if it befits, if it's surpassed, if it's matim. You know, like Mrs. Axelrod says, if it's matim, do it. If it's not matim, don't do it. That's it. That's the Mizab Shiddis in Yiddishkeit. The same thing with davening, the same thing with learning. Because what you're involved in, it's not just like, you know, uh, it's it's something like rom an, a romantic idea that, you know, <laughs> like the progressive left, you know, you're, you're for the downtrodden, you're for the for the oppressed, you know, for the simple people, you know, like a, it's so romantic, so spiritual to be, you know, for this tmimus and pshitas and and la di da and just and all you're missing, just the violins and the whole thing. No, the point is that what you're doing is so holy, it's so gewaldic. I mean, if you were screaming at the top of your lungs, if you're just going out of your mind with the Sabbath, you wouldn't even touch the heels of the level of Kedusha and Ruchnius of what it is that you're doing when you're davening and when you're learning. Adramu, Tmimis, and Pshitas. That's it. Say the words, 
Put your mind, connect your mind to the words, and that's it. Let's, Bezat Hashem, take a quick look at the Sikha Saram for today. Oh, here we go. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Now everybody can see that you're all covering your faces because on the screen we can see you, the all of you. Oh, in it. Abrami also is, dares to show his face. Everybody is like too shy. <laughs> Sicha 224. The, this is Reish Chav Dalet. Be'inyan ma'ashamu b'seinu zichonim l'brochom. That Indian which Chazal said, Masechus Chagiga, she'osu l'istakel ma' le'ma' 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 ma' le'fanim ma' le'fanim ma' le'fanim. You're not allowed to look in what is above you, what is underneath you, what's before you, and what is behind you. Abayinu zichonim l'brochom said that every person, every kol odom ve'odom, every single person, yesh lo b'chinus ma' le'ma' 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 he has his own personal Bechina, what is above him and what is below him. Shalafim Adrigosoy, that according to his own personal Madrego, is forbidden to him to look at it. Because by some, his Seichel stops by the Galgalim, the Rekiyim, universe, whatever it is, stars, whatever. And you shouldn't, more, shouldn't look more than that. Also, all the philosophers and all the researchers, all the Chikiris is only you know, to do with with uh, with the physical universe. Above that, they don't know anything. And also, what is underneath the Galgalim, a lot of people made a lot of mistakes. He says, it's forbidden to look at it at all. That the Klal is, the, the general principle is that every person where his Seichel reaches, that's the end, it is forbidden to, to proceed further. Because anything that is above it or what is below it, a person needs to rely solely on Emunah. This is a, a, a tremendously, tremendously important Nikud. This is what, what uh, we were talking about before. You know, the Rebbe says in... in, in, in uh, in uh, Torah Hafalov, famous Torah Hafalov, that the Madrega of the Shiva Saneris, the seven candles of the candelabra, the holy candelabra of a person's face, you know, it's the eyes, the ears, the nose, and, and the mouth, was the, 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 the epitome, the maximum, the perfection that a person can reach was reached by, obviously, Moshe Rabbeinu. And when by us, the perfection of the mouth is, you know, be careful not to say a sheker. And the perfection in, in, in the nose is to have Yashemayim. The perfection of the ears is to have a Sechamim. The perfection of the eyes is not to look where you're not supposed to. By Moshe Rabbeinu, those same seven things, I mean, the two ears, two eyes, two nostrils, and the mouth, those seven vichinas, and the mouth is pel per daverbo. In other words, Moshe Abeno is saying what it is that Kodesh Baruch is saying. It's no longer just a question of is it true, is it not true. It's emes to the Madrig of Kodesh Baruch is talking. Even if you're Shemaim, Moshe Rabbeinu is already has, you know, Pchinus Anovo. Even if Amunus Chachamim, Moshe Rabbeinu already, it's no longer an Amunus Chachamim because who will Moshe Rabbeinu have Amuna in? There is no bigger Chacham than Moshe Rabbeinu himself. So what is the Amunus Chachamim of Moshe Rabbeinu? What is it? What does this reach? So Rabbeinu says, Bechol beisi ne'emanhu. 
he is faithful in my entire household. What does it mean? Moshe Rabbeinu knows absolutely everything. Moshe Rabbeinu knows everything. The Nevi'im, they know everything. It's a DKMS, they know absolutely everything. What they don't know is that which HaKadosh Baruch Hu hides from them. You can see it with the Lisha, Lisha Novi, that, that, that when the son of the woman that he blessed with the child, when he passed away, and she's coming to him, and she's, you know, dropping at his feet, and his shamus wants to push her away. And he says, let her go. He says, something has happened. Hashem has hid it from me. In other words, if Hashem didn't take an active action of hiding it from him, Moshe Rabbeinu would know. Because Moshe knows absolutely everything. The whole base in Emanu means that Moshe Rabbeinu is totally faithful to say, to reveal what needs to reveal and not to reveal what needs not to be revealed. That's the Munas Chacham in Moshe Rabbeinu has to have in himself. What to reveal and what to reveal. He has to rely on his own Chachma. What to reveal, what not. What has to do with the eyes. Rabbeinu says the Moshe Rabbeinu was like, the Tmunas Hashem Yabit. He looks on, on the, 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 the vision, the visage, as it were, of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Ibn Nelson says, you know, something which is based, you know, very much on this particular sikha that we learned. Not to look what is above you. And not to look what is under you. What is before you and what is behind you. Not to look at what is below you. Don't look at things that does not be fit for you to look at. Obviously, it can be things that are not sneers. Be reading stuff that you shouldn't be reading. Hearing stuff that you shouldn't be hearing. Now, when when we got you know all the the war and whatever it is and all the atrocities, not to look at the pictures. Do not look at any of the pictures. Yes, not to look at what is below you. But there is also a great temptation to look at what is above you. And this connects with what I said before about the limit of Torah before the Baal Shem Tov. It got to be such dry, you know, splitting of hair that almost had to do nothing with the, the discussion at hand. Why does a person go to discuss things that are beyond him? What's wrong with just understanding things the way they are? If it's if you have a problem, you know, understanding what, what is being said, so you ask a question. If you don't have a problem, then you don't ask a question. And you understand, go right in. Let's... Because it's not fun. If, you, if you're if you Yiddishkeit, I mean, we live inside Yiddishkeit. Yiddishkeit is not just a thing to do. Yiddishkeit is also a place to live. It's the club that you belong to. It's your environment. It's your neighbors. It's your wife. It's your children. And many people are apt to just follow what comes naturally. I live here. You know, I shouldn't get up and go to shul in the morning. What should I tell to my wife? Well, you know, the neighbors are you know, coming to shul. My wife says, what's happening with you? Oh, you're going down the hill. Okay, so I'll go to shul just to get off my case. And when you learn to hear you go to Kailu, you can go to Kailu, it's very easy, you know, to get down to, you know, you go, you drink tea, you you schmooze a little here, schmooze a little there, you, talk about, you know, it's very easy just to while away the time. Because the Torah in and on itself, you know, to be who I am, to hold in the madrega that I hold, is frankly 
it's not that interesting. You know, there's no buzz. There's no, like, when I show people how smart I am, well, now there's a buzz in that. Now it's really working. When I'm saying a chiddush, and give out a chiddush, ah, then there's something there. When I'm asking a kasha that nobody can find a parrot, now you're talking. That shot that you don't learn to early shmo. You know, they asked, they asked, you know, the Chafetz Chaim, why doesn't he write a book with all the union of Tzarech Iyam? The things that he wasn't, the kashas that he wasn't able to, to break down. So he says, all the places that I wasn't able to understand, this is my deficiencies. You want me to make a book with my deficiencies, with my friends? What's, what's the point? No, those that asked him, the point was like, See, such a kevalik kasha, nobody knows the terrace for that. It's unbelievable. That's not what it's about. And Ibn Nelson says, when you look straight at what it is that you're supposed to look at, you don't look at what's above, and you don't look at what's below, you know what you're seeing. Tmun Hashem Yabit. You're looking at Kaddish Baruch himself. It may feel, uh, you know, it's not fun. It's not exciting. It's not, I don't know. Look at it. Do whatever it is you can with it. If you can understand it, fine. If you cannot understand it, go vital. You want to understand it because you're ADD to the point that you can't do anything, Ask Kodesh Baruch please help me to learn this, to stick with this, to understand it, to fill it out. This Indian that what it is that you see, the problems that you have in your life, the, the, the problems that are, that are, um, that you meet, the, the, the machashavas that you have to fight, the temptations that you have to fight. That's your Yiddishkeit. This is what it is. And if you accept it, because you believe that you are in the hand of the Tzaddik, and what is given to you is Hashgacha 100%, just the way it's supposed to be. Not an Ayodah more, an Ayodah less. Nelson says you will go up the ladder of Yiddishkeit step by step, all the time. Until you zeicher to mamish pchinas tzmos Hashem yabit. Meaning, when you look at that which you're supposed to, and you don't look at that which you're not supposed to, not trying to compensate, but I, I wanted to make it interesting, so I'll make myself, you know, I'm the kobol. I want to make this a really interesting, I'll be a storyteller. I want to make this interesting, so I will tell people, I'm a marvelous, just Face the Yiddishkeit that you're given. Do what you can. And above all, as I said before, remember, the term that you learn is way greater than your understanding of it or the fun that you're deriving from learning from it. That feeling that you're busy, the mitzvahs that you're doing, they're all way, way beyond whatever it is that we human can possibly get out of it, being the human beings that we are. I told you that I, I heard from uh, Nisan David Kivak that he said, you know, Shabbos is, is me'en olam haba. So he says, what resembles what? Shabbos resembles olam haba? Olam haba resembles Shabbos. Like, what is greater? And he said, the truth is, that Shabbos is way greater than Eil Mabo. Shabbos is in Kesa Eli, and Eil Mabo is in Eil Mabina. Our privilege to be 
engage with Yiddishkeit is far greater than our failure or our success. In this world, the home of this world, you know, if you are a rocket scientist, then, whoa, somebody, but what happened if you were just a cashier in a supermarket? Eh, you know, you're just like a, a human cockroach or human cat, kitten or whatever. You're not a human being. But what has to do with the Yiddish garden, what has to do with that, whatever it is that we're doing, we're dealing, like you're in Shabbos, you're in Shabbos, the food is good, wonderful. The food is not so good, also wonderful. A daven is good, wonderful. A daven is not so good, also wonderful. Because Shabbos is greater than anything that you could possibly feel. It's greater than your oil and You're in Shabbos. You are in Shabbos. I can follow you. I can Shabbos, Shabbos. You can love him, Malka. Get out of love him, Malka. The love him, Malka is so much greater than anything. You can... It's tasty. It's not tasty. I feel like I don't feel like washing. You don't, you, you don't feel like washing. You don't feel like benching. Oh Hashem, I cannot even begin to tell you what a gewaltige Sache it is that we are Jewish, that we have the Rebbe, we have the term we have this amazing schus of the Kodesh Baruch to be to be touching these things that every single Nakuda, every single mitzvah, every word of Torah, every, every word of tefillah, every word of chizok, of emunah that we speak in this world, is so much greater than anything we can even hope for in Eul Mabba. In Eul Mabba. Ashreinu. Bekitzer, Ashreinu. What can I tell you? And then we have Bo Hashem, we cannot, I we have you know, five chaverim getting together and talking and having a good time and just touching infinity with every single word that speak here. It doesn't matter. So Gevalt, the Rebbe is here, the Kodesh Baruch is here, the Torah is here. Ah, Ashreinu. Ashreinu matov chalkeinu. Bemet, bemet, bemet. Okay. People, Bezat Hashem, uh, next time, Monday, we have an open mic night. And <laughs> we learn Eitzes uh, and I hope to see as many of you as possible. We had some marvelous discussions here. And a lot of, you know, it's not just me talking my head off, but, you know, we're sort of like, you know, getting to things that are really no gear, that people are like, uh, it's gewaldic, gewaldic. Shkoch, thank you so very much. You should have a gewaldige week. Brocha, Natslocha. Brocha. Gashmi, Esruchni, Amen, amen. Look at Yeah, you're handsome, finally. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We must have to start the recording.